This is a Philips PM5570 analog video test signal generator, which, uh, as you can see, is on the scope there, is capable of generating some quite impressive arbitrary waveforms. Uh, I don't know anything about analog video, and I don't even have a monitor which would be able to render this, and I don't even have a manual for it, but uh, I figured. This thing is going to be absolutely 100% analog, and uh, it would be quite fun to see what it makes it tick. So, let's take it apart. I'll give it a bit of minutes thought. I actually do have a monitor which can display this thing. It's just not very portable. So yeah, let's fire it up and see what happens. After about eight minutes, enough minutes of playing around with it, we're starting to get something. Lots of mysterious patterns. You can put on noise. It's really difficult to use this thing without it. Uh, without having the manual for it, since uh, it's, it's just got way too many buttons. But these certainly do come up with some kind of test patterns. This starts to look good. Sine wave. I've got no idea whether or not the TV is synchronizing properly and so forth. This thing just has way too many settings for me to have even the slightest shot at understanding it. That really does bring out the <laughs> bad analog TV feel, now, doesn't it? So that's the end bit of it. I certainly can do even more patterns and stuff, but it seems to be only in black and white. So this is supposedly one of the cheap models. I, I think there's a Philips PM5544, which is the traditional TV pattern generator which you'd see in all the stations. This is just its cheaper brother. Either way, I think it's going to be mighty interesting to take this thing apart because it's going to take some analog brains in order to get all this stuff out of the front panel. And yeah, we've actually got some kind of colour coming out of it. Vaguely green bars and blue line. Whoa, there we go. Whoa. Breaking into this thing is quite easy, just undo two screws either side, apply the correct amount of brute force, and open her up. And these are some analog goodies if I ever saw some. And this is a real multi-bod beast, I must say.
So we have uh, some kind of main board over here. It seems to be mostly control and uh, output stuff. And we've got all the little labeled daughter boards sitting here, which should do all the different signal components. They're probably mixed on this board or the back plane down. Yeah, there's, I know that there's a board underneath this one as well, so there's quite a lot of stuff going on in these boards. What do we have? We have a voltage regulator. I'll just take this off and have a bit of a better look. Um, that's the money shot right there. So what boards do we actually have? Well, we have a voltage regulator, external input, signal adder, square wave, square wave and matrix, pulse generator, pulse matrix and pedestal, pulse and bar Kramer staircase, staircase generator, sawtooth generator, sign shaper plus marker, triangle generator, frequency control, just look at all those trimmers. Burst generator, super imposition, sync interface, sync generator, and subcarrier generator. All labeled with the spare part numbers. I mean, just look at that number of adjustments in there. Oh, this is just lovely. Someone spent uh, probably most of a day tweaking all of these back in the, I believe it's, it's a mid 80s unit. You can see the actually point to point soldered backplane in there. That's kind of surprising. I was expecting that to be a board, but you can tell us see that the sockets are just point to pointed. And over there we've got our power supply with not that three giant rectifiers. Three giant blue Phillips caps, these aren't known for reliability. And a pretty big droidal. What's that? 7.8 volts, 1 amp, 14 volts, 1 and a half. This is going to be something like 100 VA, 50 VA, thereabout. And just a few connectors around the back, all beautifully colour coded. Uh, I wish I had a manual for this thing, that would be so beautiful to look at. I'm certain the documentation inside and out is going to be of excellent quality. Some nice gold-plated coaxes hooking everything up there. Even more trimmers hiding there. Front panel potentiometers, trimmer, coils, big farm of little metal Kendron sisters. Ah, oh, this is so beautiful. And just look at this beautiful card release mechanism. We just pull these tabs aside and. Uh, Pull. pull the card out if it's very sturdy socket like so. Oh, this one's got an RF can on it. Ah. And you can really see the quality of these PCBs when you get them out. Double sided, properly free plated, lead soldered. Oh. These are just never ever going to fail on you. And to get the underside off, you just unscrew the feet and we should be in. Oh, that's another beautiful sight, isn't it? There's got to be at least 50 ICs here, they seem to be. Mostly four phase in series logic and all of them socketed with no exceptions. Yet Phil Phillips definitely sprung for four phase in series logic in this thing. Four phase in series, four phase in series, four phase in series all over. So this is where the brains of the unit is and uh, it's not, not surprising since this is where these uh, computer controlled uh, buttons are which are also really make a nice ornament and rounding out the four phase in series logic we have one giant socketed uh, demultiplexer sitting there in the corner right by these quite special buttons 
because as you might have seen in the begin beginning of a video, these are actually computer controlled. They do not stick in and they have light bulbs in them which shine and flash. And this is really something quite unique. I, I'm hoping to be able to take these out to actually have a look at the mechanism because they feel pretty great. You can even see the mechanism moving inside of them. And I mean these are proper buttons. Really proper. Oh yeah. And while there sadly seems to be no good way of getting access to the actual light mechanism, we can in the right angle do get to see some of the action. And just look at that. Flashing light bulbs. This is just pornographic. I wish this was touch video so that I could convey the feel of these switches because they, they feel like, the best way to describe them I would say as a fairly heavy uh, linear mechanical keyboard. That, that's the most apt description I can get out of the top of my head. Knowing that we've got all these little logic circuits making everything happen because this thing doesn't have a microprocessor, it's all in the logic gate brain here. All the switching, all everything which isn't by the analog controls on the front. Oh, it's just so, such a good feeling. Just knowing <laughs> this thing doesn't run code. You couldn't upgrade the software and if you tried, I know that it's been on for a while. <laughs> Definitely passes the smell test. And just look at all this lovely pointy point wiring. We've even got little tiny coaxes running between the slots. And jumper links going straight across. This is so beautifully handmade that it's insane. An all gold plated contact going to gold plated fingers on the boards, obviously. That's just a work of art. Someone's put an entire afternoon putting this thing together without a hint of a doubt. And now I realise that I've been quite the idiot in taking this thing apart because uh, upon closer inspection it's obviously a standalone unit in a rack mount case. Okay, here we go. There's going to be a wild spray of nuts coming out of it since I disassembled half of the recommended case. I might have been over my head. See, this is why you should spend at least two minutes thinking about what you're doing before taking something apart. After spending about an hour playing Philips assembly line, we've finally returned to something which looks uh, a bit more like uh, sense, basically. So we've got this uh, really heavy duty cast aluminium mounting kit, and then we've got the chassis of the unit itself, which is certainly a lot more accessible than it was when I tried to disassemble it the first time. Uh, that's a considerably better overview of the inside of the unit. I really wish I, I could do this unit justice by telling you what all this stuff does, but I was born after the age of analog TV, so we're out of luck. But we can at least take all the boards out and have a quick hard world look at them, so this is the voltage regulator. We've got three trimmers, probably corresponding to our three transistors round the back. And what's that? 
three seven two threes, LM seven two threes. Pretty classic linear regulator. And here's a close up of a few of the front panel controls. They are dual wipe contact, which seem to be very custom in nature indeed. They almost seem to be built in a little PCB rather than the kind of corky material you usually get in them, and someone's obviously been there in here and labelled them. So this thing's probably been opened before. I would not be surprised since. The place where this came from, they tended to do all their own service on stuff, but these are definitely high quality things. Potenti potentiometers look kind of cheapish, but the feel in them is pretty damn good. And the motherboard really looks just like a uh, scaled up version of all the little daughter boards. We've got a million 4000 series logic, so it's a million little <laughs> cans and a million little trimmers that someone's painstakingly gone and adjusted. I mean, j just the sheer amount of uh, screwdriver tinkering in producing this thing is just insane. I mean, imagine the number of pages it would take to describe how to adjust every single one of these in order to get this unit into proper calibration. I mean, hey, some of these are actually labelled. Pre-1, 50%, pre-2, video pre, comp, filter term, syncmon, ITS zero, ITS level, component video zero, component video pre, plus 3db, minus 3db. Wow, everything is actually labelled. <laughs> there it says, processing unit. <laughs> So this is the CPG, as you would, in today's terms. Oh, that's, that's just beautiful. Just look at how they've just kind of refrained from putting any components around the text there. They really want to make that stand out. Well, that's definitely an aesthetic touch more than anything else. And on the other side of the RF can, we don't really have much exciting going on at all, except for another large probably a double transistor and a whole more heap of blue Philips caps which are going to go pop at some stage. So there you go, that's a quick look inside a Philips PM5570 analog video test signal generator and I so wish that I could uh, do it justice with proper explanations of its fear of operation and so forth but frankly I am uh, probably the most ignorant person in the world when it comes to analog video. But at least I hope I could bring you a bit of enjoyment in at least seeing the guts of it, because I think it's a really beautiful device. And uh, I am going to make certain that this thing gets returned to the old station from whence it, from where and whence it came, and uh, I'm going to try and make sure it doesn't get thrown away, which it was actually very close to getting. I would much rather just stow this away on some shelf with all the other old test gear they were flying around, just so that it might be brought out again in another 20 years for a bit of nostalgia for what was once. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Cheerio!